several missiles hitting Ukraine's capital of Kyiv overnight. This marks the first time Russia has attacked the capital in months. Now, the strike started early in the morning and continued throughout the day. We know several people have been killed so far and several dozen others hurt. Russia has also been targeting both infrastructure in Ukraine as well as civilian areas. Russian President Vladimir Putin says this is all a response to what he called a terrorist attack on a bridge to Crimea, which Russia annexed back in 2014. That 12-mile long bridge connects the region with Russia, which has been, it's been using uh, the ridge as a major supply line for its forces in eastern Ukraine. And no one is claiming responsibility for the damage, including Ukraine, but Putin claims Ukraine's special forces were involved and again calling it an act of terrorism. The war in Ukraine has been happening for close to eight months now, but it's taken on a different tone in recent weeks, with Putin continuing to threaten the use of nuclear weapons. U.S. security officials are saying that a nuclear attack from Russia is not imminent after President Biden warned the war could escalate to nuclear Armageddon. But the Pentagon says the president used those words for a reason. What needs to happen is for the two sides to be able to, to sit down and negotiate and find a way out of this peacefully and diplomatically. Now, uh, Mr. Putin has shown no indication, zero, none, that he's willing to do that. In fact, quite the contrary, by calling up hundreds of thousands of reservists, by politically annexing, or at least trying to annex, uh, four areas uh, of Ukraine, he's shown every indication that he's doubling down, that he wants to continue to prosecute this war. Let's bring in Mark Cancy and former Pentagon official and former colonel with the U.S. Marine Corps who currently serves as the senior advisor for the CSIS International Security Program. Mark, as always, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. I actually want to begin with the what happened overnight, these explosions in Kyiv, the first attack from Russia in months uh, on that capital city. Uh, what, what, what do you make of Vladimir Putin's move? We knew that he would be... He, we thought that he would be coming back strong after being backed into the corner with those uh, defeats on the battlefield. These attacks are pretty clearly a response to the destruction of the bridge. Putin has done this in the past when something has happened, uh, a NATO meeting or some event on the battlefield, he strike back uh, using missiles. They seem to be aimed at the civilian population and at intimidation. The good news is that his inventory is now very limited. Uh, the Russians don't have the ability to replace these missiles, so these attacks have become uh, episodic. Uh, they haven't been continuous as they were at the beginning of the war. All right, so let's get back to uh, National Security Council spokesman John Kirby, uh, trying to really kind of tamper down uh, the concern raised by the president's comments, um, saying that it'll be a nuclear Armageddon. But Democratic Senator Chris Murphy told CNN State of the Union that the president should be sounding the alarm here. So here's what he had to say. Let's take a listen. The president is right to raise the risk of nuclear conflict because Vladimir Putin is increasingly getting pushed into a corner. This war is going incredibly badly for him. The mobilization that he has undertaken has backfired. This morning you see scenes of hundreds of Russian troops essentially refusing to go into training into the front. So, you know, this is a dangerous man and the United States has to be ready for Putin to use a tactical nuclear weapon. So what do you make of the president's Armageddon warning? It, it, was that too inflammatory? Does it change anything? Uh, should we really be on edge about something like this? Well, Putin's nuclear rhetoric is certainly irresponsible. He's been rattling the nuclear saber even before the war began. But this kind of rhetoric needs to be toned down on both sides. The risk we have is that an escalation of uh, words will turn into some events on uh, the battlefield. Uh, plus, there's some risk that, that we will deter ourselves, that is, by raising the alarm and uh, rattling uh, our populations and the Europeans, uh, that we will uh, force ourselves to back away from support of Ukraine. We have to keep in mind that this is not the Cuban Missile Crisis of the 21st century. It's a very different set of circumstances. There's no confrontation between U.S. and Russian troops as there was back then. There's been no movement of uh, nuclear weapons. Mark, I also want to get your thoughts on uh, some security concerns at, in Zaporizhia. That's one of the four regions that Russia illegally annexed. Yesterday, 13 people were killed uh, after a missile attack on that Ukrainian city. It's also home to Europe's uh, largest nuclear power plant. How concerned are you uh, that Russia is launching missile attacks near this facility? Well, it's always dangerous when you have fighting going on around uh, nuclear power plants. 
Um, we're in an unusual situation here in that the city uh, is in Ukrainian hands. The power plant the complex is in Russian hands. The one piece of good news here is that these power plants are very different from the ones at Chernobyl. Uh, they have a containment facility uh, so that they're uh, much less likely to be damaged in any attacks. We also have the IEA uh, inspection team on site uh, to keep an eye on things. Uh, so far, they've raised the alarm about uh, exhaustion by the Ukrainian staff, but they have not indicated that there's any uh, um, immediate threat of a, a nuclear incident. So on Saturday, a bridge that links Crimea to Russia was damaged in a bombing, which Putin calls a terrorist act. Uh, as we know, Crimea was annexed by Russia back in 2014. So could Putin use this uh, then to his advantage? That was kind of the major point of the um, the the, uh, the false election or that, that he had uh, to annex certain areas of Ukraine. Is there any weight in this? Well, the, the bridge is, has uh, an important symbolic uh, meaning. Uh, it was built to connect Russia with Crimea, mm -hmm. uh, which the Russians had uh, annexed in 2014. Uh, Putin drove the first uh, car over the bridge. Uh, so that there's a lot of symbolism here. There's also an operational effect in that a lot of uh, Russian logistics flow over the bridge and the railroad line. I wouldn't make too much of that, though. I mean, the railroad line looks like it'll be uh, restored relatively quickly. There's a ferry service, uh, so the Russians will be able to recover, but uh, it's quite a, a blow. One interesting thing is it seems to be a truck bomb. I've seen all the kinds of speculation, but truck bomb is the most likely. Uh, and if so, that was probably a suicide bomber, which might be a new tactic in this war. And Mark, the U.S. Uh, administration continues to uh, send its support military aid to Ukraine. Um, they're trying to help them defend themselves. That, that, that fine line, help Ukraine defend itself, but not help it launch an attack on Russian soil. So they're trying to be really careful with what they're doing. How, what do you make of the ongoing support from the Biden administration? Does it need to continue as we go into this eight month of the conflict? Well, the Biden administration has provided an uh, extensive uh, range of support for the Ukrainians, you know, everything uh, from artillery to, to um, uh, personal equipment. That support does need to continue. Armies in the field need continuous flow of munitions and equipment, both to uh, replace what's expended and also to equip the new forces that have been uh, built up over, over time. Uh, if the Ukrainians are going to prevail, this flow needs to continue and the Biden administration has indicated uh, that it's going to do that. There was an additional uh, $13 billion in the um, continuing resolution that was just passed by Congress that covers the first quarter of the next fiscal year. About half of that uh, is for uh, military aid. All right, Matt, Mark Kansian, retired colonel with the U.S. Marines and current senior advisor for CSIS International Security Program. As always, thank you for your time. We really appreciate you having on, having you on. Thanks for having me on the show.